If you would uh, take a seat, if you care to be seated, we will get underway. Good evening, and thank you all for joining us at the 2020 State of Schools Address. I'm Carol Stutter, Chairman of the School Board, and I want to take this opportunity to welcome you all. Please take a moment to turn off your cell phones and switch them to silent. Before we begin, I would like to ask you all to join me in thanking our career and technical education students who helped make tonight possible. Our Culinary Academy students from five different high schools have prepared tonight's food, and students from the Hospitality Academy at Fleming Island High School are also here volunteering their time. Thank you to all of you. Let's give them a hand. At this time, I would like to invite School Board Member Ashley Gilhausen to the stage to lead us in the invocation. I'm a little bit shorter than Miss Stutter. <laughs> um, bow your hearts with me, if you will. Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to come before your throne, to invite you to be here with us this evening. Father, we give you thanks for the amazing things that you've done here in Clay County, for the community that you've given us to live in and to contribute to. Father, help us to remember, Lord, that um, in all we do as a school district in educating children, Father, that your word says in Proverbs chapter 1, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Help us to hold you in your right place, Lord. Fearing you isn't about being afraid, it's about giving you the reverence that you're due. It's about giving you the position of authority in our lives. Father, as we endeavor to give wisdom and education to the children in this community, let us do it from a place that holds you in your rightful place. Again, we ask you to be with us tonight. We pray all this in your name. Amen. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Mary Bola, Vice Chair of the School Board. I would like to, excuse me, there we go. If you will please stand at this time, the Fleming Island High School NJROTC Color Guard will now present the colors. Colors. Ready. Cut. Forward. March. Right turn, march. Follow up, hold. Freeze and follow. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ready, close. Ready, cut. Follow the face. Forward, march. Thank you, you may be seated. That was a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. They did a great job. I'd like to introduce Tina Bullock to introduce our elected officials. First of all, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, this is such a great opportunity for us to come together as a school district and community to recognize the outstanding work taking place in our classrooms every day. First of all, we have some honored guests here today. Former Superintendent Dr. Ann Wiggins. <laughs> Former Superintendent Ben Wortham. <laughs> Former, Superintendent Ben Wortham. <laughs> Former Superintendent Ben Wortham. 
former school board member, Lisa Graham. Mm -hmm. From Cron Christman Ted Yoho's office, Dorothy Richardson. Clay County's property appraiser, Roger Suggs. The mayor of Keystone Heights, Karen Lake. From Green Cove Spring City Council, Connie Butler. Former mayors of Orange Park, J.B. Ringer and Phyllis Ringer. <laughs> and from the Clay County School District Police Department, Chief Kenny Wagner in the back. And now at this time, did I move, leave anybody out? I just want to make sure I didn't leave anybody out. Thank you. Um, and now at this time, as by special request, and using a little creative poetic licensing, uh, I have a poem for our superintendent. From Clay County, our superintendent will go. So here are some Addison quirks that Hillsborough needs to know. He never, never slows down to eat real food, we're told. Only Sour Patch Kids is favorite with flavor so bold. Superstitious is he regularly knocks on wood you see and if none is available steps out and finds a good tree. A clean freak vacuums his office so no germs does he like. Softball is his family's passion with only hits and no strikes. Has an unmarked designated spot and must always park on Walnut Street and will never park on the dirt so no dirt touches his car or feet. Maybe that is why he owns most shoes, more shoes than our current school board chair. I believe last count, owning every color and style, the total was 99 pair. Most would say that he is very OCD about the things he wears as well. Matching socks to ties, even coordinates wedding rings to watches and his cell. Beware Hillsborough County. Be ready for PowerPoints and presentations galore with phrases like the end of the day, world class education, transparency, and so many more. But my personal favorite phrase that Addison uses frequently and fits him to a T. Hillsborough County, welcome your 22nd superintendent, a first round draft pick from Clay County. And the pick goes to Addison Davis. It's, it's so true. <laughs> It's an honor to stand before you tonight. And as excited as I am to introduce our speaker, this is also somewhat sad and somber. A moment as this that will, this will be the last time, excuse me. This is also a somewhat sad and somber moment as this will be the last time we introduce him as our superintendent. Over the last three and a half years, it's been a true pleasure to work with Addison Davis as he has transformed our district. We have seen every metric within our district improve, from our finances, to graduation rates, student achievement, our credit score, and our district morale. We are now number eight in the state, and I know we will keep climbing thanks to the framework work that we now have in place. As a school district, we have come together to improve student achievement. As Clay County Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Davis has brought together the key stakeholders in the community. From parents, students, and teachers, to the business community, and faith-based leaders. He has fostered a spirit of teamwork and collaboration throughout the school district. One of the things I appreciate most as a school board member is the ability to work collaboratively with our superintendent. So Mr. Brodsky, pay attention. <laughs> 
I'm sad to see Superintendent Davis go, especially considering the success we have seen here in Clay County. As a lifelong educator, Addison understands the unique challenges facing public education. Mr. Davis is aware of everyone's role in the success of our district. He has devoted a lifetime to public education. Now, before I turn the program over to Mr. Davis for the last time, Addison, would you please come and join me? Now, on behalf of our teachers, our support staff, our administrators, our school board, and the entire Clay County School District, we want to thank you for the achievements that you have brought to this district, the metrics that we've met, the gains that we've received, the goals that you've reached, and we're going to miss you and your family tremendously. So I'd like to, and I personally, as a friend, will miss you, so we'd like to present this to you on behalf of all of it. It says, presented to Addison G. Davis, in appreciation of your dedication and loyal service to the Clay County School District. Clay County Superintendent of Schools 2016 through 2020. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please join me in giving a round of applause to Mr. I'll do this to my, my common sense, my wife, my best friend, and I'll be in bad trouble. <laughs> So first and foremost, thank you so very much. There's so many things that each of you could be doing this evening, but you elected to come here and talk about the great things that Clay County District Schools is doing and will continue to do under great leadership. You know, you know, five years ago, when you know, I, I decided that this is something that I really wanted to, to, you know, to do and take on the roles and responsibilities of the new superintendent in Clay County District Schools, there were a few people that kind of linked to me and, and supported me along the way. And those individuals I have not forgotten. And uh, if it wasn't for those individuals to take a chance on a newcomer, an outsider, even though I lived here for 14, 15 years, they took a chance on someone to, who was hungry and, and, and ready to lead the work every single day on the behalf of children. And I thank Mrs. Karakis. I also thank Mrs. Studdard as well. Ms. Bold was there with me, and, and, and along with uh, Renly Paiva, each of you stood beside me every single day. And you know, Ms. Bullock was there with, with, with me as well, and showed and truly displayed that they were ready for change, that they were embracing to find a truly highly qualified educator to lead the work. So if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here today. And I'm thankful so much for them taking a chance on me, so Mr. Sam Pruitt as well, taking a chance on me and being able to stand alongside me so that we can do great things for kids. And at the end of the day, with everyone in this room and every educator in Clay County, I think we've done some monumental work together because it wasn't done in isolation with Addison Davis. And my hat's off to each of you for the hard work that you've done every single day. So give yourself a round of applause. that as I transition in, whether individuals were a part of Addison Davis's team or not, we all became a part of the team for children. And this is where I'm so thankful for all of the board members, Ms. Karakis, Ms. Bullock, Mrs. Mrs. Bola, Mrs. Studdard, and Mrs. Gilhausen as well, because every one of them were, 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 were held me accountable, supported me in this work, and truly allowed me to be a great leader and work on behalf of children and protect the working conditions of adults every single day. But this evening, this evening's about Clay County. Where, where are we as an organization? Where are we going? What is our overview? What do we have to, what have we have accomplished in a short period of time? And what we have to do in order to continue the great work as an organization. So um, this evening, you know, we, we started when we came was a theory of change and a theory of action. One of the greatest priorities that we brought to the Clay County was make certain that we had a founding, the fundamental stage to create magic every single day for our children. And we know in order to do that, we had to have priorities. Can we establish the greatest, uh, you know, learning environment for our children every single day where it's disruption free? And if we did that, where teachers can walk into a classroom and we had children actively and authentically engaged every single day versus compliantly engaged, then we could work to develop great educators and leaders and retain the, the best and the brightest every single day in Clay County. And if that foundation was established, then we can truly focus on building excellence in every classroom where we had equity, we had uh, the greatest curriculum that we could provide for our children from tier, tier one, tier two, and tier three curriculums and push our children intellectually regardless of their readiness levels and regardless of their socially, uh, you know, economic status, regardless of their circumstances, 
did we and can we provide the greatest experience every single day where they could compete inside and outside of our classrooms? And if we did that, and when we did that, then we focused on making certain we engaged our communities. Where every one of this room was accountable for our work, every one of this community was accountable for this work, as we could not, teachers, leaders, district staff, superintendent, and the school board could not do this in isolation. And then if we put that in place, we could build the greatest infrastructure where, where individuals transition to our classroom, they feel valued, and at the end of the day, as Mike McCauley, Professor McCauley always says, we even get a chance to prepare our children to become full option graduates. Whether they go to the workforce, whether they go to the military, or whether they go to post-secondary education. And that's what it's all about. And in Clay County, we have done just every one of these priorities to continue to do great work. In addition to that, when we adopted a new strategic plan, we wanted to make sure that we had core values that not only were present in our classrooms, but are also present at our dinner tables. One where we make certain that the collaboration and engagement of every stakeholder, regardless of your support professional, community member, faith-based partner, um, you know, a student advocate, leader, you are all at the table being an instrumental part of this work. In addition, we want to make sure that we remove any bias and we create equity in every one of our classrooms, regardless of where, what, where you were, whether you were in Keystone, in Orange Park, in Fleming Island, in Green Cove, or Oak Leaf, it didn't matter. The standard was the high standard, coupled with high support every single day. Regardless of where you came from, we wanted to make certain that you had the greatest instruction, the greatest leaders, the greatest teachers, and the greatest support every single day. And then we wanted to lead with excellence. And that's what we have done in the last few years, and we want to make sure we had integrity. The way we, I carry myself as a superintendent, the district staff, principals, teachers, parents, everyone within this organization. And then we wanted to be not only transformational in our work, we truly wanted to be innovative. And every year for the last three years, I've given awards for every one of these core values. But this year, I wanted to make sure that I you know, identified an individual that, that represents every one of these core values and leads the work every day, single day. This is an individual that, that follows through. When I came in, you know, this individual wasn't committed to Addison Davis. This individual wasn't committed to the prior superintendent. This individual was committed to the work every single day. For been here for over 30 years in Clay County, I am excited to, uh, to work alongside him. I'm excited that the governor has supported him with this work. And this year, my, my recognition goes out to representing the core values is Mr. David Broster, our new interim superintendent. Want to get the good side of that mustache. I've been trying to ask for shade, but he told me no way now. Him and Mac and P.I., whatever that guy's name is. He said, I'm sorry now, the blue bloods. So I don't know. So over the day, let's talk about our accomplishments. And it's the accomplishments of every teacher, every support staff, every leader in the, in the organization. When we talk about what we have done, we have made tremendous gains in this organization. We have moved from a systemic B school district to an A school district, and these are all the matrix and accomplishments that we've had in a short period of time of three years. I say this, and I say this unapologetically, we have been unmatched with the gains that we have made in every matrix in the state of Florida. So let's give yourself a round of applause. coupled with high support, it gets results. And uh, while there were moments of being uncomfortable as a leader, as a teacher, there's a lot of change. There was a, there was a, it was all about putting systems and processes in place and creating the best experience and the best environment we can for every one of our stakeholders, our teachers, and our students. And as you see, through identifying a solid curriculum, providing wraparound supports to our school instructionally, academically, making certain that we look at our financials and, they, and put them in a way that supports and has a balance of what we put in schools and on schools, we see the matrices have, have made tremendous gains. From moving from an A to a B, from moving from 20th to 8th, from moving from the, the graduation rate from 84.7 to 91.9, .9, and uh, that's hard work of our college career coaches, our high school principals, our parents, our students, Terry Connor, 
every one of them made that happen. For the, when we are the all, one of the only school districts in the state that has eliminated the achievement gap for students of color that are graduating at a higher pace than, than white students in the state and in Clay County with graduation rate. And that's a celebration. And let me the acceleration that we're doing in middle school and high school, and at the same time, we see the industry certifications continue to move to prepare our children for a workforce. And then, while college readiness is no longer part of the accountability system, it should be a focus point from our side because we want to know how well our students are competing, not only for, uh, you know locally and throughout the state, but nationally as well. Because when my daughter went to UCF last year, they didn't ask her what her FSA score was. They didn't ask her what her EOC score was. They want to know what her SAT score was and her a ACT score. And this is us pushing it and making a priority in our school district with children who want to leave the state of Florida. They want to go to the, you know, Stanford or want to go to Harvard. They can show that they have the college readiness mindset and are ready to go to do great things outside of Clay County. And that's an awesome accomplishment. Also, we always say you want to figure out what the, uh, the core values of an organization is, you follow the money. And when we looked at it, you know, look at the money. The money truly has worked you know, diligently with the school board. The school board has been really a major part of this, along with Dr. Leducco and every one of our, of our senior staff members, to make sure that everything we do financially is done in a fiscal responsible manner. When we come in, we were really unhealthy and uh, in an organization. We couldn't, you know, we see that the money, you know, it wasn't purpose in a manner that valued and inspired teachers. It didn't, you know, you know, administrators didn't have a raise for nine years. Teachers didn't have a raise for five or six years, and support staff as well. When we came in, we made it immediately a, a part of, uh, you know, a, a professional target to make certain that we showed and valued teachers every single day. And I can tell you, Nostra Piva every single day was uh, part of that work. You know, coming in as Renee Piva. For those of y'all don't know, I call her Nostra because she is Nostra, and. Um, you know, she pushed me every single day, and she got every penny out of me and the board. I mean, this year when we gave the record high raises, it's all in the backs of Renly Pipe for pushing me and making me uncomfortable. And, um, and, and I say that because Renly Pipe was one of the greatest things that I can tell you that this happened to me in Clay County. She has been a leader. She's been an advocate for teachers and advocate for administrators. She's just an advocate for education. And I will always remember her, what she's done for me, and, and to help me, push me to do great things and have that balance for what we put inside and outside the classroom. But overall, we've done some special things. You know, the Clay Educational Foundation, Michaela's done great work this year with double and tripling that money, uh, you know, to give back to our schools. And at the same token, we, you know, a big push, uh, you know, thank you the school board willingness to go out and get the millers to get additional revenues to put safety and security within our schools and then tackle some work related to our insurance. So a lot of great things that you see we've done financially and this is, you know, we're still going to be on an upward trajectory in, in the years to come because there's systems and processes in place. And overall, one of the, some of the greatest things we've done is, is climate and culture. Ever since that um, there's been some horrific acts that's happened in, in, in South Florida and in, in Parkland, you know, mental health has become a truly, you know, sensationalized point of focus in education. And to be honest with you, while that was a tipping point to, to, to push legislators to give us money, that work has always been great work in Clay County. And as you can see, we talk about you know, you know, what we've done for students with disabilities. We've increased their, their graduation rate by 13.4% in the last three and a half years. We've also made certain we, uh, we have increased our transition plans for students from the age of 18 to 22 with the, uh, the, with the WUP project and also what we're doing at Penny Farms. And also we will see that we will bring forth to Clay County a gifted autism spectrum disorder partnership that can gain more accessibility to children in need. But also look what we've done with mental health. For the first time ever, we launched social emotional learning curriculums where our children have a sense of connectedness, a, a sense of safety, and a, a sense of wellness. And uh, we, we've done a really good job of bringing new curriculums such as a set of mindsets within our schools for our teachers and our students to create self-awareness and a self of care. And at the same time, we, we brought um, mental health clinics to 11 of our schools and, and we had drop-in clinics as well where students every single day have accessibility not only to a school counselor but to a clinician to help them address any mental issues that may be exposed to them. And then we created new cool things such as the buddy bench at elementary schools where if Addison Davis is still alone, he goes to the buddy bench and he knows that someone will come, whether it's an adult or another child, to connect with Addison Davis to make sure he feels inclusive every single day with our school district. And uh, we have the 30-60 day initiative that we have. So a newcomer to our schools, we checkpoint every 30-60 days. 
to make sure that learner is adapting to the environment well and doing great things. But climate culture continues. What we've done is when we, we had close to 200 students that, um, that have uh, potentially would have dropped out in the last year and in the last year. And through the mindset of uh, Mr. McCauley and Josh Crystal and pushing me to do something differently and really pipe, I told me when I brought a catapult, we can do it ourselves along with Laura. And you know what? The answer is we could do it ourselves. And we said, hey, Mr. Aftuck, we've got something new for you. We want you to do. We want kids who cannot succeed or not excel in the traditional setting. We want you to create a different experience where they have a limited learning opportunity. And we've saved the lives for over 200 children in one calendar year as 155 of them have graduated. And we have 50 more currently within that process as now. Let's give Mr. Aftuck a round of applause. Keystone on the 218, 219 corridor and, and, and such as Orange Park where parents don't have accessibility to, to uh, grief counselors, to clinicians, to, to vision or to doctors, we brought it to the schools. And now we have accessibility to the community partnership schools where every one of these schools, these three schools now have new initiatives where the families can come to our schools and, and be provided with the services they need to be successful every single day. In addition to this climate and culture, I'm sorry, climate culture is big for us. And everybody always asks what Mike McCauley does. He does all of these things, yeah. and, and him and his team. But one thing we've done is re re redesign the code of conduct. We've had a code of conduct that was just pushing children out every single day. And we know if they're not, at, if they're not in our schools, then we can't teach them. And uh, what we did was create an uh, equitable matrix, behavior matrix, for children now have defined consequences within our school district. And through that matrix, we created equity, and we have a decrease in student in the number of suspension, out of school suspensions, a decrease in the number of in school suspension, and children are now in our schools, in our classrooms, and we can gain access to them through restorative justice, through making sure that we have student advisory boards and accountability boards where students now can reflect on their discipline, on their actions they made versus being sent out of the, of the classroom every single day and sent out of schools. So we're having better efforts and better entrance, and uh, now I think that's all linked to having positive behavior, supports and interventions within our schools, and then really focus on youth mental health, first aid training along with trauma-informed and care. So other things are what we've done, the insight survey of climate and culture, we have, we have we progressed along many, many matrices. This is a survey we give to every one of our teachers. We see that we have outpaced our, ourselves in the last three years, also outpaced the national average. And you see we've made tremendous growth in the valuation, the climate and culture, the way we care for teachers, the way we compensate them, to look at the satisfaction of, of their interactions. And this is all a teacher base to give us feedback about what barriers we can remove and what we can do in order to continue to do great things. Also, when we look at our, our body of work, we facilities. Dr. Kemp's not here because he's going to be a you know, first-time grandfather. And uh, that's right, and I said it today, he doesn't want to be called, you know, grandfather, he wants to be called Coach Mike. So if you see him, he's Coach Mike. And, uh, but, you know, he gave me this long sheet. I said, I gave him one slide to put stuff on. He gave me a sheet that had 360 things he'd done in the last three and a half years. And it's true. And uh, if you haven't walked to our schools in the last three and a half years, you will see we have transformed, the, you know, every one of our environments. So when you walk in, you, you really have a sense of care and we're welcoming school in the district. We've, take, we've taken money that, through our, you know, our finances and we put had a balance of what we're doing on the schools and in the schools so that kids truly feel inspired and so our teachers feel welcomed every single day. But some of these are some of the great things we've done with Discovery Oaks. When we said we didn't have any money, we built it $25 million debt free in the last year. And at the same time, one of the big things I've done, we've done, we, we have the first ACE center ever in the state of Florida, which is a testing center through Flemming Island. And that was paid through Flemming Island funds, the, the work they're doing over there with their students and all the money that they're generating through their program. And at the same time, we, we did an a, a, a internal audit through EdFirst. And EdFirst just shows us that we have you know, close to $618 million of needs within our school district. So hopefully, when this goes on the ballot in November, that everyone supports it because our schools are in need with three, over $300 million in deferred maintenance. And at the same time, we have $300 million of new schools that need to be built. And I can promise you, I didn't leave a dollar tree hanging out you know, when, I, when I closed my, my profession out. But and the big thing we've done, we've reduced the, the fish that would buy 200 portables plus portables, and we will continue that work every single day. Um, as you look for transportation, you know, one of the things coming in, the biggest thing was, you know, Addison is really hot on, on our buses from parents, from students, and from bus drivers. And when I came in, 30% of our buses only had AC, and, and I'm proud to say that at the end of this year, we'll have 240, 100% of our buses will have, uh, will have uh, AC for our students, and the wishes, that is a celebration as well. And uh, you know, this is the hard work of our staff, and 
and uh, we, you know, we just got, we have a brand new 100 buses that are started, I've already started to trickle in as well, and all of the 100 buses that we got brand new, they have five cameras on each of those buses, and now every one of our buses by 2021 will have cameras on it so that we can uh, to truly can capture what's going on our bus, hopefully positive behaviors, but if they're undesired, we'll be ready to be able to have accessibility to them. And then uh, we're doing some really cool things. We're trying to increase the, um, you know, the the ability, the ability to get our bus drivers back in, play, in place because we have over 18,000 students that trust us with transportation, the parents that trust us with transportation. And our job is to get them here and get them on time every single day and get them safely on time. So the one thing we've done, and, and I'm welcome to the board. Thank you for the board moving the, the the bus drivers pay. You know, from you know a, a monumentally in the last two years, where we're truly being able to compete in a, in a local and state level. And then the big thing for safety and security, one of the things we've done is save $1.2 million annually starting next year is we developed our own police department. And uh, while there was angst in the community, they don't understand it. These young men and women that are serving and protecting our schools every single day are doing great things in the leadership of uh, Chief Wagner. And I'm thankful for him and what they've done. As you can see, we've already been beneficial. We've already reduced the arrest by 79% in our schools, which is a celebration because they're on campus, they're our employees, and they're, com they're committed to building relationships every single day with our children. And at the same time, we were the first one in Northeast Florida two years ago to create the Guardian program and to stand it up in, in record time, in a short period of time, in order to make sure we're compliant with 7030 as well. And then we've done great things to go out and do, you know, leverage $2 million worth of school hardening. We have Mutual Link, which is now in a, a button uh, where anybody in the school district can call a code red or code yellow. And we put deans of climate and culture in every one of our schools to be able to focus on building greater relationships with our students if they transition to prepare outside of our school work. Food and nutrition. We would have had a food truck here tonight, but it was, it was raining. I would have had it serving. I would have had to interact with it. This is a really cool initiative, and we see an uptick in our students. And you know, they, when, the, when, they, when this new truck comes to, uh, it's a new option for our students. When they go to the schools, they sprint to it. So uh, openly, you know, Mr. Brossi, Mr. Superintendent, you're going to need more of these. You know, so uh, give them a slower. I mean, she's a uh, she's a wizard of that work, and uh, I'd have multiple of these around because it's really cool. And this is an initiative where our kids can, who are in our academies, business, finance, hospitality. You know, they can go and they can be a part of this and they can start competing not only locally but throughout the state as well. And then we expanded the CEP, which is we have around 20 schools now that have free lunch, free breakfast every single day, which is, which is another barrier removed that we don't have to worry about because we can make sure they have the nutritious meals they need to be successful within our school district. And then at the same time, we, uh, you know, school choice. This is the big thing we've done. We, uh, we have to understand in education, we're, not, we're no longer the only game in town. We've got to recreate who we are. And in the last three and a half years, we've done some really cool things, and we've, we've expanded our programs by 12 programs in our schools, from Montessori to Cambridge, from uh, STEAM to early, you know, early high school to uh, Coppergate Visual Performing Arts. And our job's not done. We, we, we want to go to dual language. Dual language. We want, there's so other, many other things we can do to be competitive every single day. And we've got to understand that um, in order for students to select and parents to select us, we have to understand that they are our customer. We have to understand that we have to make the connection, and we've got to think differently every single day, and we've done just that. And by 2021, every junior high school will have accelerated pathways to feed directly up to have a K-12 continuum within our schools. And at the same time, by 2022, uh, our, our Montessori program, which is thriving at Swim and Penn Creek, has a waiting list, and will be a full immersion in that program by 2022, where every one of our, our grade levels will be able to experience that, that awesome educational experience. The technology, some of the things we've done is really cool. Is uh, you know we, we updated, we became Wi-Fi a year ago, and uh, that's the hard work of Jeremy Bunkley and his team. They have, you know, I, you know, I, we, we talk about keeping up with Addison Davis, you know, Jeremy Bunkley is in with Stroud me every single day. Him and his team, you know, have done great things with Sabrina Thomas as well, and also, um, you, know, it, you know, with Nathan and, and Baker, you name it, the list goes, and continues to go on, Ms. Shriver as well. But you can see, you know, with devices in hand, wireless connectivity, we look at online resources, and we look at the new systems that we have. We're going to Edge of Point next year. We have done some really cool, innovative things. We must, as educators, under, meet our digital natives where they are. And if we don't, we will lose them, we will disconnect with them, and we've got to be a thriving organization that helps them be successful. We've done just that. 
And at the same time, human resources is it continues to do great things with our with our recruiting plans, with making certain that we go out and have an aggressive recruit plan. We have open open contracts at this point in time of the year. We do a great things with making certain that we have the pair to pro. So that pair to pro is a program where we're paying pair professional support professionals who are in our school district. We're paying. We have a great relationship with St. Leo, and in two years of school work, which we're paying for, they get become a you know a qualified educator, and we're going to give them jobs every single day. And that's an awesome initiative. And that's our job to make sure that we retain. As you see, our retention number is retained over 90 teachers in Clay County. You know, when I came in, they say this is the place to work. Is it's very it's really exemplified when you look at the retention rates that we have every single day from our leaders, from our support professionals, and our teachers. It's truly happening, and we continue to do great things by celebrating and recognizing our teachers in our school district. Um, so you know, what do we do, man? Like, you know, what do we, you know, usually I get to speak for an hour. So uh, but, yeah, this they cut my slides, and uh, you know, that's <laughs> I think that's for the school board. More than anything, but uh, I, you know, I've already built Dave's slide for March the 6th, even though, even though I'm here. It's about 97 slides. Don't ask me what's on it, we're going to make stuff up. <laughs> but you know, what do we do for next steps? We, we had a soft launch you know, uh, with, our, um, with our community our learning series uh, that's built upon with, uh, with, with Michael Karakis along with uh, Mr. McCauley. Soft launch at Keystone last night with uh, you know, educating our, children, our parents and, you know, about what, you know, how to have ESC practices. So one thing we're doing with this launch, we want to make sure that we have a better job educating parents how to deal with standards, how to deal with uh, you know, financial aid, how to deal with uh, behavior intervention, how to become a partner and an advocate for children. And this will be a full implementation launch in the, you know, in the coming weeks that you will see. We've got to make sure that our next step is expand junior high school's acceleration, which will be done by the end of the year. And one thing we want to do is our choice offerings. Don't be afraid for a dual language, for a military leadership academy, for looking at gifted and talented, to have an autism learning lab. These are all things that we can do if we make it a priority within the organization. Also, we've got to, we have some overcrowding. And if anybody's from Patterson, I'm sorry, you guess God, something's got to happen. And, uh, you know, so that's going to be uh, on board at the same time with, uh, with the Oak Leaf area. Oak Leaf continues to expand, and right now we're working with Times that, to expand them to have a, you know, a standalone eight-wing, uh, you know, eight-classroom wing because they continue to explore. And then we have to make certain that, you know, when we talk about early education, if it's truly important, and I own this as well, we've got to expand VPK. We've got to make sure that every Title I school in our school district has VPK, three-year-old, four-year-old programs to be able to focus on, you know, helping our children get a chance at how they interact with others, how they interact with curriculum, how they interact, um, you know, with teachers every single day. And the, and the sooner we can get them to our organization, the better they will be. And, um, and if we don't have room in our Title I schools, then I challenge each of us to go to our community, go to our businesses, and rent out a classroom and put our teachers in those classrooms, put our furniture in those classrooms, and edu educate our children every single day. And we've got to think differently to make that happen. And then, a CEO for the day. Every CEO, every business owner, every legislator should come to our school district and be a principal of the day. They need to understand what our principals do and deal with. It is not an easy job. And if we can put this, this you know, initiative in place, then it will open up the eyes of what it takes to be an educator. And it's, it is very difficult. If you think we get the 7.5 hours that we pay, or the 8 hours that we pay leaders, teachers, we do not. They give us 11, 12, 13, 14 hours a day. Because why? They do it because they care for children. And we need to do that and expand our, our horizon to let them see what we're doing every single day. And then as you see, we need to make certain that we align K-12 initiatives. We need to look at making certain that we have we create an Educator Hall of Fame. We have some Hall of Fame members in here today. We, you know, with uh, Mr. Wortham, we have uh, Ms. You know, Dr. Wiggins. They get, you know, these are people that should be in our Hall of Fame every single day in Clay County. And at the same time, we need to make sure we can participate in the Green School Initiatives. Do we want to make sure that we have schools that can, that can launch in that initiative and be differently and innovative? And then we got to continue to build strategic planning for minority hiring within Clay County so that our student body is truly reflective of the students that we serve every single day. And then we've got to make sure we continue to look and create and find money to greater support our initiatives. Um, with this said, at this time, uh, and the board's going to come up. That may be record time for the state of school. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
I'll be, I'll be 15 minutes. Um, all the board members come up. Oh, there you are. You got them all? Yes, by the way. You don't go away. I've got to tell y'all, that is the shortest presentation this man has given since the day I saw. That's a gift. That's a, uh, you know, and God bless and those for our county school board. Uh, board. <laughs> I hope I don't want to We will, yes. I want to see your socks. He's got regular socks on. Good Lord, his socks don't match. Okay. We've been plotting and planning, and we wanted to do something uh, so that when Mr. Davis gets down to Tampa, uh, that this will be on your bookcase. And every time you look up and things are tough down there, you're going to say, boy, I miss those guys. <laughs> but, <No>. Girls. <laughs> Young ladies. He's got one Young man. Ladies. He's got six women and one man to deal with down there on their board. I saw, I saw him in the last week. You got your work cut out for you. Whoa. And guess what? He's going straight into the biggest redistricting mess you have ever seen. And I thought, oh, too bad. <laughs> Actually, before the interim. I don't know. Okay. This is Addison Davis, Clay County District School Superintendent, 2016 to 2020, in appreciation for being a champion of children. <coughs> now, Mr. Davis, you know when I first found out you were going, I told you I loved you. Yes, ma'am. I've supported you since the first day yeah. I met you up at Panera yeah. at Oakland. <laughs> I hate to see you go. I feel like I'm losing not only a great co-worker, but I'm, I'm losing a friend, and uh, so when we come to the uh, sessions in Tampa, we're going to be looking for you. How's things going? Are we going great? But, but, it's got to be the answer. You know, you know I've, I've worked with five superintendents, and, and I have had so much fun, like with Mr. Wortham, it was great. Uh, I've had good four years and I've had bad four years. But I gotta tell you, these last and we won't go there. <laughs> these last three years have been so much fun. It makes you enjoy going to meetings. Um, he has been so good at communicating with the board. I appreciate that because that hasn't always been the case. Um, you have um, treated everyone with respect and we respect you, and as much as we hate to see you go, don't buy it. We wish you the very best. Thank you. I hope you go down there and make them the best they can do, and I know you will. And um, it's, it, this is tough because this is our last to wrong with you. Three more days of work and he's gone. His mind is already gone. I'll tell you. <laughs> but this is real slide out, yes, so I don't know what you're going to do with it. <laughs> I, I, better, I better hold it. It's like a uh, yeah. 75 piece. It's really beautiful. Uh, Nicole, you want to take a picture of it? Thank you so very much. Sorry. And then we can take a summary. We can take a Oh, I got to get all the bills. That's all right. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. Oh, I hate this. I hate this. Thank you very much. And, and, and please know I'm, I'm truly grateful. Um, you know, this work, I said before, this work's not easy. This work has been, you know, rewarding, it's been challenges, and, um, you know, the political landscape, uh, you know, I'm an educator, I am not a politician. 
I had to learn quickly about the political landscape in uh, in Clay County because uh, Ren Lee said it's the best. It's a what? Do you want to say it? No. Okay, I'll say it. I'll say it because I got three days left. It's a blood sport. There you go. It's, it's, it's fun. You know, but, you know the, the greatest thing I've done is I, I don't read Facebook anymore for the last year. <laughs> I stay off of it. I, I, I say that to each of you. But nonetheless, you know, this, this, this work isn't over and um, this work will continue. And uh, as I said before, you know, one of the things that I truly wanted as I accepted the job in Hillsborough County, I wanted to make certain that we work collectively to, with, with, the, with the governor's office to select someone who is a highly skilled, qualified, motivated, energetic educator. One that understood the body of work, one that understood the systems and processes within Clay County, one that is embedded in the school district, one that is committed to children, one that wants to make a difference, one that pushed me every single day to make me a better leader, a better person, and a better husband, one that uh, you know that really held everyone accountable. And I and I'm so blessed that um, and and happy that the governor has selected you know a, a leader that will continue this work. What Addison Davis has done should not be the standard. It should be the foundation. And because Addison Davis didn't do it in isolation, he did it with everyone in this room, everyone in this community, and everyone in the school district. And I'm proud to say and announce that we have, we have we, that the governor has acknowledged and uh, identified a great leader to continue for me to transition the torch. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the interim superintendent, Mr. Dave Broski. Thank you very much, Mr. Davis. Let me just tell you, you know, I've had uh, six different jobs in the Clay County school system. This is my 30th year, and it's always easier when you go to a school as a principal and the guy before you wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say Mr. Davis made this real tough. <laughs> you know, the standard, the standard is high. I appreciate all that he's done for me. Uh, every single day. In fact, I even joke with him that I've given him probably, I'm going to say over the, the years, maybe about 300 documents <laughs> that I've given Mr. Davis. Various paperwork, you know, sometimes people don't behave in human resources, we got to do some things there. Stuff happens, right? Of those 300 documents, the only ones that Mr. Davis did not correct or put a mark on were three. So, so no matter what you give the man, there is a correction that occurs. So, so when he goes to Hillsboro, uh, I will know his email address, and I will send him some documents down there and see if he corrects them from, from Hillsboro. But in all seriousness, it's really a tough, tough act to follow when you follow Addison Davis. The standard is high. The bar has been set extremely high. You know, as I'm just so proud that the uh, governor uh, chose an educator to lead the school system. Um, I'm not a politician, although I've learned that people comment on Facebook uh, today. Uh, so I, I did learn there was 87 likes, and I thought. I'm not sure what that is, but somebody said that was a good thing, right? There was no negative comments, so I figured I was off to a really good start as interim uh, super, superintendent. In, in all seriousness, in, in 30 years, it's been a real blessing in the Clay County school system. You know, starting off as a teacher at Lakeside Junior, uh, moving on to Clay High as a teacher, eventually assistant principal at Clay High, um, principal at uh, OPJ, for a couple of years, principal at Middleburg High School, principal at Oakleaf High School, assistant superintendent for human resources, and now uh, interim superintendent. I just can't keep a job. It's, really just, it's just that simple. Uh, you know, I, I am just so proud right now because moving to the interim superintendent uh, spot for me, when somebody had asked me if I'd be interested in that, my first answer was no. Uh, and then as time went on, I began to realize that 30 years, more years I've invested in the Clay County school system, more than half of my lifetime, 
has spent working for Clay County Schools. You know, this is a very proud moment for me, for Sue, for Ryan, uh, Sue's family, because being interim superintendent for me is more than just a job. It's a calling. And there's a big difference between people who are motivated um, by a job versus something that truly is a passion. You know, I have a real passion for students, a real passion for, for learning, and, but I'm also smart enough to know it takes a whole team. School systems aren't one person. You know, it's the school board. It's all the teachers that I see out there, which are the foundation of every classroom. It's all of the sport people out there that support them, the administrators. But also, I see a lot of people out there that are just good old-fashioned supporters of public education. And we need you too. So tonight, I ask each of you to go ahead and, and commit to Clay County Schools, to a future. It's really tough when a guy like this leaves, uh, and then you come forward. And so I ask for each of you for a renewed commitment for the future, because you know, gosh darn it, our kids deserve it. And that's really the bottom line. Thank you so much. So with every new, new superintendent, there, every new superintendent, there has to be a, you know, kind of a square in. This is going to be a ceremonial square in. It's not the actual. He will get on Monday at <coughs> 7 a.m. I'll get I'll get work a little earlier. <laughs> he will be sworn in. With, you know, but tonight for ceremony, him and his family are, are here to um, to accept this great, incredible, accountability, responsible uh, position. So um, he wanted each of you to share it with him, and, and I think it's appropriate as well. They just hired me to do a swearing in, but I have to say something. I can't wait for Hillsborough County to be ninth. <laughs> I, David Broski. I, David Broski. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support, protect, and defend. <coughs> that I will support, defend, and protect. The Constitution and the Government of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And of the State of Florida. And of the State of Florida. That I am duly qualified. That I am duly qualified. To hold office under the Constitution of the State. To hold office under the Constitution of the State. And that I will well and faithfully perform the duties. That I will well and faithfully perform the duties. Of Clay County Superintendent of Schools. Of Clay County Superintendent of Schools. On which I am now about to enter. In which I am now about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Please join me in welcoming. The